think it's really important and necessary to look at if we want to achieve a Sweden where uh, less than 5% of the population is smoking every day, we need to have alternatives. We need to look at what's what's working and what's not working. And my view and the view of, of my party as well is that we need to make sure that there are alternatives to, to smoking cigarettes. Otherwise, uh, we wouldn't be seeing the decline in, in um, daily smokers uh, that we have seen in the last few decades. Hello, world. Welcome to the Vaping Unplugged podcast. Everything you need to know about vaping and tobacco harm reduction. Hello and welcome to Vaping Unplugged, the World Vapors Alliance podcast where we talk harm reduction, vaping, and today especially about nicotine pouches and snooze. The reason for that is, is because we have a very special guest today with us. We are joined by Jesper Carlsen, who is a Swedish member of parliament from the moderate party. Welcome, Jesper. How are you doing? Thank you, Michael. Uh, I'm doing very well. Uh, it's been a long day in the uh, in the parliament, so I'm uh, really looking forward to uh, to our chat. Then let me right away start with a big thank you for taking some time out of your busy schedule for us and talking uh, with us about harm reduction and what's happening in Sweden and, and the EU um, in this area. Maybe let's start with the basics and you give us a quick background about your personal position on, on harm reduction and your party's position on these issues and the role um, your party plays in Swedish politics at the moment. Yeah, sure. So um, my name is Jesper, Jesper Carlsen. I'm a member of parliament from the uh, island of Gotland, located in the in the middle of the Baltic Sea. Um, I uh, think I can I can say that I have a lot of relatives uh, that used to smoke uh, when I was younger, and of course, smoking is very bad for you. It's uh, uh, causing cancer and other tobacco related illnesses. So uh, a lot of my older relatives have uh, have switched to other. Uh, other alternatives, uh, for example, the Swedish snooze, uh, which has a lot, a lot fewer uh, tobacco related illnesses. Uh, and some of them are also using uh, nicotine pouches um, instead of instead of cigarettes. So being a member of parliament uh, and now in the committee on, on public health, uh, I think it's uh, um, really, it's really important and necessary to look at if we want to achieve a Sweden where uh, less than 5% of the population is smoking every day, we need to have alternatives. We need to look at what's what's working and what's not working. And my view and the view of, of my party as well is that we need to make sure that there are alternatives to, to smoking cigarettes. Otherwise, uh, we wouldn't be seeing the decline in, in um, daily smokers uh, that we have seen in the last few decades. Yeah, now, unfortunately, not everyone is is uh, agreeing with you and me on, on this issue. But before we go into the, the more negative aspects, um, let's quickly talk about one of the very positive um, messages we received uh, in the last few weeks. Um, and unfortunately, it's uh, not too often that we hear positives in this area, but Sweden um, reduced the tax rate on snooze by 20%. Um, what do you think about that? And what's the, the goal which Sweden wants to achieve with, with that step? So the goal is to, to give alternatives uh, and also you know, economic incentives to switch from, from cigarettes to Swedish snooze which is a tobacco product. Uh, but the problem has been for, for a very long time that it's a very, um, it's very appealing for any uh, minister of finance in Sweden to tax snooze at a very high rate, uh, because of course we are the only ones manufacturing it. So even if the price goes up, uh, nobody will, will have a, uh, an alternative source for, for snooze. Uh, and we can see that you know, working in a very different way. If the tax on cigarettes is too high, uh, the smuggling goes up uh, in a very in a very steep way. So it's been a, it has been a long debate, but now we're trying this this model where we are 
lowering the taxes on on snooze and raising them uh, a bit also on on cigarettes to to have that that final push because we're close to to our goal our target to have less than five percent daily smokers in the population uh, but we really need that last that last push to really um, come across the finish line yeah and it also makes makes sense from a public health perspective right to to um tax different products according to their actual risks so if we have sm cigarettes as the most risky tobacco product uh, it should be taxed higher than a less harmful alternative yeah definitely and i think it's it's very important to always come back to why why do we want people to stop smoking and find other alternatives it's it's not because we uh, are in bed with the companies producing e-cigarettes it's because we want people to to live longer lives it's because we want less people to uh, have these tobacco related um, illnesses that you know really puts a strain on 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 public health so um, it's an important point to always come back to that we want we want people to have healthier healthier alternatives even though we know that it won't be possible for a lot of people to go directly from from cigarettes to broccoli and kale uh, we really need um, something to do uh, there in between Pr practical solutions instead of the idealized goals that's what what we preach as well all the time and i mean it also makes sense from a policy perspective in the way that if we look at people who are still smoking they tend to be in lower income um brackets of society so to make an alternative more affordable to them is also help helpful in that way yeah yeah it is um and we we can see now that looking back uh, the swedish snooze which is a uh, you know a, a black pouch that you can put under your upper lip uh has been great in reducing uh, tobacco related illnesses amongst men uh but it never really made it into the uh um at the mouths of, of of women so we can see that for example older women today are, are still smoking because they haven't found you know their alternative uh so really when it comes to vaping or nicotine pouches i think that's you know it brings it brings new options for for people or or groups of people that haven't really seen snooze as a as a viable alternative for them yeah, definitely. And you already mentioned it. I mean, I think it's not a coincidence that Sweden is the country with the lowest smoking rate in Europe and almost um, achieving the, the smoke free goal set by the EU already 17 years ahead, I think, than, than the expected timeline. Um, and it's the country with the exception of the snooze ban and the rest of the EU um, snooze is, is banned. And we heard to the, uh, this week as well from a leaked document that the, that the EU Commission is looking into banning nicotine pouches um, EU-wide. And that would also affect Sweden because they consider the snooze exemption um, only applying for snooze and not for the nicotine pouches. So this would actually be even a further step in the prohibition. Um, what do you think about that? Um, and, and will Sweden fight back in case the Commission actually wants to go through with this ban um i would say a nicotine pouch ban is a, is a great proposal if you want people to keep smoking cigarettes uh but if you want public health to uh, to be better and be better over time uh you need to really uh look yourself in the mirror and, and start thinking about uh what what <laughs> would you want people to to do instead because really in in a lot of EU countries, we have we have uh, more than forty or fifty percent uh, daily smokers in the population, and you know it leads to people dying prematurely. It leads to people um, really putting a big burden on on public health and the uh, the hospitals. So I think it's very very ill advised if we want if we were to to ban nicotine pouches just because it's it's something new that we haven't. Um, you know been familiar with for a long time um because i think it's a uh, you know it would be it would be detrimental and really really a bad deal for for public health if if you were to uh, to ban nicotine pouches 
Yeah, uh, from the policy perspective, do you think Sweden will push back against proposals like this? Because what we realized, we did um, a big campaign about the Swedish success story and tried to um, amplify the successful full, um, approach of Sweden in the rest of the EU because it seemed like nobody knows about it. Because um, no offense to your party name, but Sweden Swedes seem to be very moderate even with their big successes. Um, and or do is it avoiding confrontations with the EU? I I don't really know because if this ban would go through, they obviously Sweden needs to agree for a ban like this as well. Um, but that would mean a clash with the with the EU. So do you think Sweden is willing to fight this fight? We are from from the Moderate Party, which is the biggest one uh, within our three party government. Uh, I would say that we're definitely <laughs> of the uh, of the opinion that we should push back. But you know, looking at uh, EU negotiations, uh, it's rarely it's rarely a good position to walk into the room uh, with the position that none that anything none none that anyone would say uh, I'm going to listen to. So I think it's really about gearing up and preparing for for long and intense debates regarding these topics rather than you know walking into the meeting room with a already a, a no printed in your forehead so no no promises on on being the uh, um, you know being the troublemaker in the debate but but definitely something that we are going to uh, push back against because it should be in every in every European country's interest to uh, uh, to have fewer people smoking cigarettes, uh, and this is probably the best tools for it. And from a consumer's perspective, we can promise you all the support for the pushback because obviously we see it exactly the same. Um, smokers need alternatives, and the more alternatives they have, the better it is. Even as World Vapors Alliance, vaping is not for everyone. So for for some people, snooze or pouches um are the actual product which which allows them to switch away so the more choice we have the better it is so we fu we are fully aligned with that and um try to push the the especially on the european parliament level the eu commission is i think uh, even harder not to crack um because there we to moving on to the next topic in the international level um there, is, there are the negotiations already going on on the position for the EU for the COP10 meetings coming up where basically um, the WHO or the treaty of the WHO uh, will decide on worldwide regulations. And there we see very similar discussions. So there we have also an, a potential um, pouch ban um, or flavor bans for vaping, even going so far as uh, bans for open systems for vaping. Um, are discussed or on the table and now the EU needs to find its position and we are very hopeful that um, Sweden first of all will again push back but maybe will be also a country to form coalitions if we look to the UK who are also very progressive towards harm reduction um, maybe that is a, a role Sweden can play in all this or how do you see that? Yeah um... I'd say we definitely have a role, uh, and I think it's it's important to to uh, have someone in the room who is sort of the the voice of reason, because you know e-cigarettes and vaping should be uh, put under under some regulation. I mean, I think there should be um, you know consumer rights and consumer information needs to be regulated. We need to make sure that products are as safe as they can be, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and that should be done at an international level. Um, but, you know, look, looking at, uh, um, what's it called? Um, for, for forbidding them altogether uh, would be, you know, a massive, massive overreach, um, because we have seen in, in countries like Sweden, and also other countries within the EU that vaping is actually a, a great alternative to make sure that people, you know, step away from from smoking cigarettes. Um, and I think the the regulation when it comes to heated heated tobacco products that are are smokeless, 
you know the eu has sometimes been been overreaching quite a bit so there are there are measures to be done when it comes to regulation but but uh the um, prohibition of 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 these products altogether is uh is way too way too far reaching uh for us to be content with yeah that's why we always advocate for risk-based regulation because that would make the most sense and the frustrating part when it comes to nicotine pouches for example is many eu countries didn't even implement yet a ban to sell it to minors and it's yeah. legal to sell it to i don't know 14 year olds um but we are already discussing to ban it for everyone and adults as well i mean first of all it would be logical to start with the basics and um, treat adults less like adults but at the same time make sure that minors don't have access to those products and be before we don't have those sensible regulations talking about prohibition doesn't make any sense to me yeah exactly it should be it should be illegal for kids to uh, to buy it and it should also be illegal for for adults to buy it and then give it to kids uh, because you know nicotine is uh, it's it's not salad um it's you know it's it's not for for young kids to uh, to start with at a at an early age uh, i wholeheartedly agree yeah and um do you it, to, to give it a more positive spin at the end so um we are expecting hopefully sweden to achieve the smoke-free goal this year i think this fall at some point the new numbers should be coming out um do you think that will change the debate a little bit within Sweden, first of all, as well, that people see, hey, this is actually working. And also in the on the international level that uh, other countries have a look at Sweden and dig into what are the reasons why Sweden is achieving that while other countries are still at 25% smoking rates. Yeah, um, I think if, if nobody really uh, makes a big, big deal out of it, it's going to be, be unnoticed. It's just another statistic uh but i think it's really it's really worthwhile to to make a big a big splash about it and actually celebrate that we are reaching that that target that goal uh so um i hope that we can we can make something something great out of it and make sure that a lot of people people know um that we have reached the targets and what we also did to to get there because ideally uh more countries would would copy us uh to make sure that you know, public health is, is better in their countries as well. Fantastic, fantastic final words, because that's exactly what, what we will be pushing for as well in the next few weeks, uh, whether it's on the EU level, COP level or on the national uh, country levels. Um, and we will definitely celebrate the, the Sweden, Sweden becoming smoke free this year that is for sure um with that i would like to thank you again and in the name of of vapors thank you also for your openness and and science-based approach to to this whole issue and and withstanding all the pressure from from anti-nicotine people or nicotine hating people um that's very helpful for us and we highly appreciate that so thank you for for joining us thank you very much michael